I found myself looking for a challenging and rewarding project, so I decided to build an acoustic guitar. This will be my second acoustic guitar build, the first one I built almost eight years ago when I graduated high school. This guitar will have back and sides made from African mahogany with a Sitka spruce top. I know it doesn't look like much now, but hopefully I will turn these pieces of wood into something like this. I'll start out by using a hand plane to prepare the back and side joints for their glue up. I can then join the two plates together using my table saw fence and a scrap of plywood as a clamp. I add a piece of MDF with two dumbbells to prevent the plates from cupping during glue up. While those dry, I will work on thinning down the sides. I don't own a drum sander, so I will do this the old fashioned way with a smoothing plane. I check the progress of my planing of the plates by using this dial caliper jig. My goal is to get the sides thinned down to about 80 thousandths of an inch. This jig makes it easy to get an accurate thickness reading. With the sides thinned down, I can then bend them using this electric bending iron. Essentially, this tool heats the wet wood to produce steam that provides some elasticity to the wood fibers. As you can see, I periodically stop to let the wood cool down and become accustomed to its new shape. Once I have successfully conformed the wood to a guitar-ish shape, I will put it in this mold I made to allow it to cool overnight. Since the sides are a little bit longer than I need them to be, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off a little bit of excess material. Now I'll go ahead and glue in the tail and heel blocks. These hold the sides together as well as provide a mounting point for the neck later on. Here I'm using chisels and eventually a block plane to remove the excess side material. I picked up this nifty ruler trick from Eric Schaefer's YouTube channel on building guitars. This helps determine the height of the sides. With the sides roughly even, I can sand them down to conform to this 15 foot radius dish. At this point in the build, it's convenient to chisel out a slot for the rosewood tail strip. I just use a chisel and router plane to get a nice snug fit. I went ahead and raided my mom's clothesline in order to get a bunch of clothespins for installing the mahogany kerfing. This supports the back and top when glued to the sides. And again, I don't have a drum sander, so here's my method of flattening the back of the guitar. It's a rather tedious process of planing, clamping, planing, and clamping again until the back is uniform at about 90 thousandths of an inch in thickness.
And now I'll just use a bandsaw and cut the profile of the guitar on the back and the top. The back of the guitar gets braced using a excess piece of soundboard material. I glue this to the center, plane it, and then sand it so it's nice and smooth. I'll do further lateral bracing on the back of the guitar by roughing out a curve with a block plane and then refining it on the 15 foot radius dish. The center strip then gets notched out to accommodate these braces and they're glued into place. I use painter's tape to mask this off like a crazy person to prevent squeeze out from getting everywhere. It worked, but it's probably a little on the unnecessary side. Now I can shape the braces with the hand plane and a chisel. I'll notch out small sections along the side of the guitar to accommodate the back braces for the glue up. Now, I'll be honest, this is a pretty stressful glue up and requires a ton of clamps. The trick here is provide just enough tension on the clamps to get a good glue joint between the sides and the back of the guitar but you don't want to crank these down too much or you could risk cracking the sides. So again, this is a stressful part. With the back and sides mostly taken care of, I can now turn my attention to the guitar top. I'll use a circle cutting jig and a Dremel tool to cut a channel for the guitar's rosette. It requires a minimum of two passes before gluing this into place. Now, I messed around with the glue for a minute or two, but it finally worked out. Now all I need to do is just cut straight through the soundboard to make a sound hole. The bracing for the guitar top is much more complex than the back of the guitar. And it requires a little bit of effort to get the joinery just right. For this guitar, I'm doing something called scalloped bracing. And here I'm cutting down the center line of one of the scallops to serve as a relief for when I carve it. This is perhaps the most fun and satisfying part of the build for many people. So I'll just be quiet and let this footage speak for itself.
as you can see, I put some additional bracing on the inside of the guitar to support it during glue up. All these braces are just the right size so that I can reach in the sound hole and remove them after the glue up. This excess overhanging material on the top and the back gets removed with a router and flush trim bit. I'll then sand it smooth in preparation for the binding. Now, there are several commercial jigs that are used to cut the binding channels with a router. However, those take up a lot of room and are pretty expensive, so I opted to use this much cheaper and much smaller tool called a Grammel for this project. It essentially works by scoring a line in the guitar top and the sides that you can then remove the waste from with a chisel and router plane to yield a nice, clean binding channel. Since I'm using rosewood for the binding, I need to pull out the bending iron and get these strips bent into shape. There's several good adhesives for attaching the guitar binding to the guitar, and I'm going to go ahead and use hot high glue. Now, this is my first time using hot high glue, and I really enjoyed it because it can be liquefied with a heat gun to extend dry time or it can be rapidly cooled to get a nice, hard joint right away. It's pretty versatile stuff. You may notice that the guitar is a bit shiny. Before doing the binding, I applied a thin coat of shellac to the guitar to prevent any of the glue from sticking to the wood on the top, back, or sides. I'll then go ahead and scrape the binding flush to the guitar and sand it nice and smooth. And now the guitar body is complete. Well, that's it for this video. In part two, I will be making a neck for this guitar, so stay tuned for that.